This is a CBS News special report, The Flight of Apollo 10. Dress rehearsal for a landing on the moon. Today, the launching of astronauts Stafford, Young, and Cernan. Reporting from the CBS News Apollo headquarters, Kennedy Space Center, correspondent Walter Cronkite. Good morning. The weather is good here at uh, the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The astronauts are aboard uh, their command module out there on the pad, ready for launch off, and the countdown goes right ahead toward a launch one hour, 17 minutes, and 39 seconds from now. This is a Sunday launch, and we've only had one other Sunday launch in the history of 19 flights in the manned space program since the first one back in 1961. And since it is a Sunday morning, and we perhaps have a lot of school children with us in our audience this morning, and perhaps uh, some adults who haven't had the opportunity because they have been at work on weekdays to see a launch. We're going through just a few ABCs here this morning before we uh, get to the last minutes of the countdown. You're going to see on our uh, broadcast before the scheduled launch at 12.49 a.m. or p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, uh, we're going to hear from our correspondent Bill Stout and test uh, engineer Leo Krupp at North American Rockwell in Downey, California, where they build the command module. And we're going to hear from our correspondent Nelson Benton and test engineer Scott McLeod at Grumman Aircraft Engineering Corporation in Bethpage, Long Island, where they build that strange-looking bug called the Lunar Excursion Module. Bruce Morton is at the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston, Texas, where they control this flight immediately after the launch, uh, which is controlled here at uh, Cape Kennedy. David Schumacher uh, is in uh, New York to fill us in on many of the details of the astronauts and other details of this flight uh, that he has been covering uh, ever since the flight was first planned. Our weather consultant Gordon Barnes is in New York as well. Here in uh, our Cape, uh, our Kennedy Space Center news headquarters for this flight, I will have uh, as a guest the distinguished uh, fiction writer and uh, science historian Arthur C. Clarke. Now, let me tell you just a few of the ABCs of this flight. First of all, as you undoubtedly know by now, it is a dress rehearsal for the flight expected to come in July, if all goes well on this flight, putting a man on the surface of the moon for the first time, which has to be one of the greatest stories of civilized man's entire existence on this Earth, the first time he escapes from the Earth and actually lands on another planet. Uh, this flight today uh, will take the... Uh, the uh, Apollo spacecraft into two orbits around the Earth and then on its 238,000 mile trip out to the moon. Take it three days to get out there. At the moon, it'll go into orbit around the moon for one day. And then on Thursday of uh, this coming week, the astronauts Tom Stafford and Eugene Cernan will climb into the lunar excursion module and they'll go closer to the moon's surface than man has ever been. On that flight of Apollo 8 in December, man's first trip to the moon, they stayed at a 69-mile high altitude and they had no lunar excursion module with them. But this time, with that little bug landing craft, they'll go down within 10 miles, 50,000 feet of the Earth's surface, of the moon's surface, and take a look at the landing site where the Apollo 11 men are expected to land in July. Now, to do this uh, flight, of course, uh, requires some highly trained men and some very highly complex equipment. The men who will make the flight, which will last a total of eight days and uh, four minutes exactly before they come back to Earth a week from tomorrow on Monday and splash down uh, 400 miles east of Pango Pango in American Samoan Islands out in the southwest Pacific. Uh, that's uh, 400 miles east of Pango Pango and 5,200 miles west of Walla Walla. Uh, there'll be a landing there on Monday afternoon. They'll have spent two and a half days around the moon, eight hours in that lunar excursion module. The crew who will do this job are Air Force Colonel Tom Stafford. He's 38 years old. He's a native of Oklahoma and a graduate of Annapolis, although he got into the Air Force after he got out of Annapolis. He has two little girls, ages 14 and 11, and he and uh, the children and his wife are going to watch this launch from their home in Houston by television, even as you and I will be. Uh, the, he is a veteran of the flights of Gemini 6 and 9. Uh, he uh, 
is the commander of this flight. Then Navy Commander John Young will be sitting in the middle seat of the three seats abreast in the command module. He is the commander of the command module, the pilot of the command module. He's 38 years old also, a native of San Francisco, but he was brought up just 60 miles here from the Cape over in Orlando, Florida. He has a girl 12 and a boy 10. He's a veteran of Gemini Flights 3 and 10. And then over in the right-hand seat is Commander, Navy Commander Gene Cernan, who is the pilot of the lunar module. He's uh, uh, 35 years old. He's a native of the Chicago area. He has a little girl, six. And uh, of the astronauts, only his wife and uh, daughter will be here watching the flight from the Cape. Uh, he is a veteran of uh, Gemini 9 flight. And if you'll remember on that flight, he made a two hour, 10 minute space walk. Now, the equipment that they're going to be riding, well, you're seeing a little bit of it right now. You're seeing the very base of that big Saturn rocket, uh, that picture you just saw, where the, uh, where the great engines fire the Saturn into orbit. And you see a picture there of the Saturn on the pad as uh, the liquid oxygen down at its uh, minus 300 degrees, 293 something degrees temperature is venting off. It steams as it, uh, as it fills into the tanks and that's what you see in the steam. There are the bells of the five engines which uh, together develop seven and a half million pounds of thrust, which is more thrust than any other rocket uh, cluster in the world. This is the biggest rocket in the world. The Russians haven't come near us in size of rockets as far as we know. The best we know is that they've got a rocket just a little less than half the size of this one, around three million pounds thrust instead of seven and a half. Looking at this model here, you get an idea of the vast size of that rocket. That picture you're seeing is with a telescopic lens of the a rocket actually behind us, but it's almost five miles away from us here. But here, right down there, and you almost can't see him on this camera, but there is a man, a model of a six-foot man at the base of that rocket. And you get an idea of how large the rocket is. There he is, six feet high. That's the base of the rocket. Now, the rocket is in three stages. One stage, the big stage down here at the bottom, which has to get this 3,000 tons, 3,000 tons this thing weighs. They have to get that into orbit. So that rocket is the big part. It's the seven and a half million pounds thrust. Five engines down there uh, with a uh, million and a half pounds of thrust each. Then the second stage, uh, the first stage drops away. The second stage takes over. It has five J2 engines, it's called. 1,125,000 thrust total, 225,000 thrust to each of the engines. And then that stage drops away, and this finally goes into orbit around the Earth. This is all taking place while they get up to that 118-mile height where they will orbit the Earth. Then you've got the third stage of the rocket here, and that's got one of those J-2 engines, 225,000 pounds thrust, and that will finally put uh, on the second orbit this much into uh, a trajectory toward the moon. At that point, this has dropped off. That's an escape tower, and that thing is five times the size, believe it or not, of the first rocket in power that carried Alan Shepard into his suborbital flight just eight years ago. That's just the escape rocket to pull this command module away if anything should happen on the pad before an explosion could take place, it would be hoped. Now, this goes into the uh, translunar trajectory on the way out to the moon. If I could get it apart here, we'll get this command module out and show you what happens here. This comes apart in this fashion. That is the command module and its service module. The service module has a 20,500 pound thrust engine to do vital maneuvers out around the moon and to bring the men home. As they get out into uh, the translunar trajectory, the fairing falls off here, peels off, blown off actually with some explosives, and the command module turns around, comes back in, links up with the lunar module, which is in its garage here in effect on the third stage of the S-4B and pulls it out. It's ejected by springs to help pull it out, gets a little distance away, and then they fire this off to go on out around the moon and toward the sun, never to be seen by Earth man again. This goes on then to the moon. When they get out to the moon, they separate on that, on Thursday, after one day of orbiting, after uh, Stafford and Cernan have climbed down through that little hatch opening there into this lunar module. 
while Young circles the moon for those eight hours at 69 mile altitude. This lunar module circles the moon but comes down within 10 miles of that landing site. Then, for the first time in lunar atmosphere, this ascent stage will fire just as they will off the surface of the moon in that July flight and separate. The descent stage will fall behind and go into orbit around the moon. It will re remain on the moon in July, go into orbit around the moon, eventually decay and crash into the